my channel. My name is Lizzie and thank you again for joining me. If you're new, hit the subscribe button and check out my past videos and future videos. That would mean a lot to me. Um, today is the part two to my perfume collection. Um, I already filmed part one. Uh, this one should be a little bit shorter. Hopefully I don't have as many to go through, but we'll see. Um, I did a quick makeup look today. It's Saturday. I don't plan on going out, so I decided to do something a little bit more vibrant. Um, this lipstick is a, looks a little garish, I, I admit. It's a little bright. Um, it's the Dior Lip Lacquer, Dior Addict Lip Lacquer or something, and it's supposed to, you know, give that kind of popsicle stain look, but it was really hard to achieve that. Um, but yeah, I just you know, wanted to do something a little bit different, and the eye look, of course, is green. Um, I used a couple palettes, the Colored Rain um, Safari palette, and the new Ciate Marbled Metals eyeshadow pots are just so incredibly pigmented, and uh, I just love them. So that is the sparkly eye look, and then the inner corner is a Huda, the Huda Green Emerald palette. Um, the Ciate and the Huda did have a little bit of fallout, so that was kind of um, annoying. But other than that, that was, you know, my green eye look for today. And before I start into my second half of the perfume collection, I did want to just share some kind of updates going on in my personal life and everything. Um, I don't know if you really care or not, but I'm going to share them with you anyway. So a couple exciting things that are coming up. Um, tomorrow, it's Pippa's last chemotherapy treatment. Um, if you were following me earlier on. She unfortunately was diagnosed with lymphoma back at the end of uh, January, early February, which is so heartbreaking because, you know, she's only four years old and uh, lymphoma is a terrible cancer that, you know, unfortunately is not curable. Um, but the chemotherapy she's been doing for six months and we've been driving back and forth to Las Vegas um, a couple times a month for treatments and she has just been doing so well and the vet is really, you know, happy with her progress and doesn't see any of the swollen lymph nodes anymore. And um, so tomorrow is her last treatment and hopefully uh, her cancer will be in remission. Um, unfortunately, with lymphoma, it does tend to come back eventually. Usually the average um, amount of time is about six months. The vet says um, it could be shorter, it could be longer, um, you know, or it could be hopefully a miracle where she won't have it again for quite a long time. We'll see, I don't know. It's just kind of up in the air, but we are happy that she is, you know, of course, feeling better and has, you know, gone through this treatment like a champ and just really is just our baby and we just love her so much. And so we're just, so grateful for the time that we have been able to have with her and hopefully the more time to come and not have to keep making these back and forth trips to Vegas um, and hopefully not have to see that vet again for a while even though the vet is amazing and it's uh, really great, um, their staff and everything. They've been really just wonderful helping us in this ordeal and yeah, so we're so excited that she doesn't have to you know go through this anymore for hopefully a really long time. And thank you so much for everybody who, you know, was sending me warm wishes and prayers and their thoughts for our baby. You know, it's it's a dog, but it's, it's a part of your family. She's like our little baby here and we just can't, you know, imagine life without her. And we just are so excited that she's going to be done with chemo for a while, hopefully. Also, even though, you know, I said that we weren't going to be going back and forth to Vegas a lot. Um, two weeks from now is my birthday. Yes, August 4th. My best friend up in San Francisco, her birthday is August 3rd. And so we've always kind of celebrated our birthdays together. And she is making a trip from San Francisco to Las Vegas. She's never been. So we're going to go up there and meet her. And we're just going to have a girls weekend, um, shopping, drinking, going to shows. So... I just can't wait for that trip. Um, Dan is driving me, but you know, it's a long kind of round trip car ride uh, just to drop me off and come back to Arizona. So he's going to stay elsewhere in Vegas. He knows it's a girl's thing and you know, we need our, need our girl time. And uh, he's gonna bring Pippa so they'll have their time together in Vegas, um, just enjoying themselves. And 
what's even more exciting too is that our good friend Mark from Boston, he um we used to live with him in San Francisco for a couple of years and he moved back to Boston and we moved here. Um he's actually going to come out and visit as well um that weekend, so he's going to fly into Vegas. He'll stay with Dan so they could do their guy thing. And then he'll drive back with us to Arizona and stay with us for a week. So I'm so excited to see him. He loves Pippa so much because, you know, they live together and she was a puppy and he would always watch her for us when we were at work. So he just cannot wait to see her <laughs> more than us, probably. But yeah, we can't wait to finally have one of our friends here visiting us in Arizona since we haven't had friends. We've had, you know, our family members, our parents come out. But yeah, he'll be here for a week. So that's really exciting spending time with him. Um, and another quick update is, um, you know, people might be like, you're not spending your birthday with your husband or whatever. Um, but my husband, his birthday gift to me, he already bought it. Um, we are going to LA in September and we're going to go, well, I'm going to Sephora. So that is my other big news. I'm so excited for that. Um, I've never been, it started last year and my Instagram friend Susie, uh, said, you know, she went last year and she's like, oh, you know, it's really a great experience and fun and you get a lot of, you know, freebies and swag bags and samples. And so it just sounds amazing. And, you know, the tickets were kind of pricey, but I figure it's worth it. You, you have like the VIP pass or the um, regular admission, I guess. Um, so I did two sessions on Saturday for VIP pass because the swag bag that you're supposed to get as v VIP is $950 worth of makeup goodies I think and skincare so that just seemed totally worth it to me and even if it are duplicates and stuff that I don't want I'll just sell on Mercari so that was so exciting that I got tickets for that we're gonna stay at the hotel I'm gonna meet my friend Susie finally and she goes with a bunch of people that she knows from her um Sephora Beauty Insider community community group or something so she, um they're all gonna go as well and I'll get to meet them and so it's just exciting to finally meet people that you've been talking to on Instagram and social media finally face to face. It's kind of like nerve wracking, like, oh, is it going to be like the same? I don't know, be meeting in person and everything. Um, but yeah, I'm just excited to, you know, be surrounded by people that love makeup and beauty products and, you know, all these brands. And I wish, you know, my friends that do love makeup as well were able to go. Um, my friend Didam in Turkey, my friend Zanika in San Francisco, who is coming to the Vegas um, trip. So unfortunately, they won't be there, but I'll be surrounded by a bunch of strangers. But you know, we all share the same passion and are we're all so excited for this trip. So I really can't wait for that. So that will be my birthday gift from Dan and he's going to go hang out with his cousin and whatnot in Los Angeles while I'm at Sephora. Um, but yeah, those are some really exciting upcoming trips and activities going on because I really don't do much in my everyday life. So that is just something that I can look forward to and I'll, you know, maybe do some vlog experiences at Sephora and, L and Las Vegas and uh, you know, maybe do some videos on get ready with me's and pack with me and everything because I love planning ahead and picking outfits and, you know, accessories and what I'm going to wear and makeup to pack and everything. So that would be fun. So I just, you know, enjoy doing that stuff. So yeah, that's my news. I don't know if that excites you guys or not, but that's, that's something that I can't wait for. So anyway, let's get started into my second round of perfume. So once again, I took notes of all the scents and notes and um, made some little descriptions from the websites and uh, how they describe these perfumes and we'll just get started. So I apologize if I keep looking down again. Um, the first one, so I forgot to mention this in my last video. Um, at the end of that video, I was doing like all of my Jo Malone perfumes and I forgot this one, even though it was right there next to all of them. It's the Jo Malone Tuber Rose Angelica. So it's one of the special limited edition bottles and it's black with all these like pop art, like paint spots and everything. So they released two of these. This one is the black one, Tuber Rose Angelica, and they had a white one with all the colorful paint spots. And I think that one was like orange blossom or something like that. But I wanted to get this scent because it sounded more like me and it's um you know floral and it's sense of angelica tuberose amberwood it's described as a white floral with a green spiciness of angelica i don't know what that is i guess it's a type of plant or flower and the warmth of amberwood 
So I haven't really worn this one because I just like the limited edition bottle and don't want it to like run out and everything. But it's nice. It's it's not overly floral. I told you in my first video I like a lot of floral scents, like light white florals. Um, but this one isn't like super floral in my opinion. It's very, you get the scent of rose, but you get that warmth, that like kind of soft warmth underneath it. So maybe it's the amber wood, I guess. I don't really smell spiciness, but yeah, I think that is a nice kind of combination of the two to not make it too overpowering. Um, this next perfume is actually one of my absolute favorites. Um, I hardly use it because I, it's expensive and I don't want to run out or like have to repurchase in the near future, but it's the Mason Margiela replica perfume. So he has huge line of these perfumes that are just like exact replicas of what their name suggests. Like there's Jazz Club, there's at the barber shop, there's by, by the fireplace, there's like all these, you know, kind of unique scents that he captures in a bottle. And since I love flowers, um, this one is Flower Market and I just love the, you know, aesthetic of this cloth label and, you know, beautiful bottle that's just very simple and elegant. Um, so it's Flower Market. I remember, I remember my work gave me a gift certificate to Sephora because I was doing, you know, a good job and they knew how much I love makeup. And I was just browsing around and checking out the perfumes and this scent just, you know, caught my eye and I just loved it and you know the certificate really helped <laughs> with the purchase of this because I think it's like 130 bucks or something like that and it's just so beautiful flower fresh flowers I think it's described as crisp petals freshness it's a fresh floral a freesia rose from grassy and cedar wood I don't know what grassy is I guess that area or something and it's just beautiful flower bouquet a bouquet of flowers is like you're at an outdoor flower market i think and you just are surrounded by these beautiful fresh flower scents and it's not like i don't know i, I mean i know some people don't like floral scents but it, i don't i feel like it's not you know overbearing in your face it's very like just a beautiful scent i don't i don't really know how to describe it but it is one of my favorite scents i would say if you didn't like the Jo Malone peony and blush suede for like a, a wedding scent, <laughs> this would be the next pick in my opinion for any bride or bridal party to wear because it's just like beautiful floral freshness. Um, here is the next scent. It's Moschino Fresh Eau de Toilette. Uh, I had to get it because of the packaging. It's so cheeky with Moschino and the little Windex bottle replica, um, but it pops off and you have the sprayer. And it smells nice, I like it. It's a sparkling top note of bright mandarin, bergamot, ylang ylang, and a touch of raspberry, white peony. Um, it's supposed to have a sensual trail of cedar wood, of, yes, yeah, no, clear woods, white patchouli, and ambrox, I don't know what that is, osmanthus, Fresh, it's supposed to be fresh, joyful, and feminine. That's a mouthful. So it's, you get that underlying, you know, white patchouli scent and that crisp kind of brightness of the mandarin and raspberry, but yeah, so it's just like, I don't know, it's, it's I could see it being a little bit too much if I like oversprayed myself with it. So I think you only need like one or two very like small spritzes because I think it could be a little bit too strong in my opinion. Um, I like it, but it's not like one of my absolute favorites. And then they released this one. It's the Moschino Pink Fresh. So I got this in the larger size and it's pink and but this one, I like this one more than the blue one because it is more, you know, that fresh floral scent um, and that has a little bit too much of those underlying notes um, that make it a little bit strong. This one has pink grapefruit, wild rose musk, luscious cassis, li lily of the valley, pomegranate, and soft wild rose, and a base of cedar wood and musk. So I don't really get the cedar wood or musk, but the pink grapefruit has a nice 
citrusy note with the florals and it just smells really nice and and fresh so that is the mosquito pink one this one is <laughs> I bought it solely because of the bottle <laughs> it's Valentino and it's Valentina pink so it's just like this beautiful rose petal um, I just love I think he was doing dresses and you know his fashion line one year with these types of organza flowers and she's very romantic and soft and floral and I just love that about the Valentino design um, in fashion so this one I got because it was pink and I think he has a, a blush colored one too I don't know what that one smells like but this one has big notes of strawberry blackberry musk may rose and rose and you definitely get the um, fruit fruity notes in this um, I think when you spray it I sprayed it just the other day and it does really have a nice longevity to it because um, you know in the morning Dan was like oh you smell good and I was like oh yeah it's this perfume and then um, at the end of the workday sorry my bangs just drive me nuts at the end of the workday um, he picked me up from work because we're going out to dinner and he was like, oh yeah, you still smell good. And I was like, oh, it still lasts all day. So that was nice. Um, and you definitely smell those fruity strawberry notes, the blackberry, and it's just an overall, like, so you expect, you know, floral because of the rose and everything, but you really get those fruity notes from it more, more so than the floral ones, I believe. Um, Next is, this was one of my earlier fragrance purchases when I was wine buying and building my collection. It's the Elizabeth and James Nirvana White perfume. Um, I love the packaging. It's all these like clean white like, little studs on it. I don't, I feel like, are they discontinuing their fragrance line? I don't know. I feel like all of their Nirvana perfumes are on sale or not available anymore. Um, but I like the white one because, you know, I'm more of a lighter scent type of person. Um, I do like their, I think the, is it the French Grey perfume? Nirvana French Grey or, or, and the Amethyst, those smell nice too. Um, I did get the rose one and that one was just too musky and spicy for the rose scent that I was looking for. So that one I wasn't crazy about, but yeah, I'm not sure if they're discontinuing them or whatnot. This one, it just smells... Um, just very bright and like soft, I guess. It's the delicate notes of peony, um, some flower I can't pronounce, muguet, tender musk, and it's described as feminine with dark sophistication. So I definitely, it is a definite feminine scent, um, but I do think you, with that slight musk undertone, you can wear it like out for date night or during the day at work. I just think it's a nice, really, overall like good scent to wear you know anytime during the day or night so that is a favorite um this one i bought also probably for packaging and i actually thought it was a limited edition um sorry i have this hair that's like on the corner of my eye let me just feel um i thought it was a limited edition scent but i guess it is a regular scent in the gucci line but the packaging was just limited edition on Sephora, but it's the Gucci uh, Flora Gorgeous Gardenia perfume, and I just love the mustard yellow bottle and this like hexagon shape. So it's just very chic and beautiful. Um, this one has you know notes of gardenia, red berries, and patchouli. So I haven't really worn this one yet, but it is it does have that more of a nighttime scent to me in my in my opinion like very it's kind of musky kind of slight slight um spiciness but I definitely I can smell the red berries and I just feel like it's uh yeah more of a date night nighttime scent where you just want to have a little bit mysterious yeah that's how I describe it a little bit of mystery to it um this one where is it it's Cartier Bercer Fou. So it's this bottle here and this beautiful ruby cap there. It's described as, well, I guess literal translation is Crazy Kiss. And it's 
to evoke the aroma of kisses with lipstick. So it has a floral note of orchids and it's supposed to be reminiscent of a kiss with lipstick or the scent of lipstick. So that's interesting. I didn't know that until I looked it up. I didn't know anything that it was supposed to be about lipstick. And But now that, now that it says it, it does have, I don't know, how, how would you describe a lipstick smell? I think like there's so many scents that brands put into lipsticks that they, you know, kind of all have their own different scent. Um, I think it's also Misa Marge Margiela replica that has a lipstick scent called Lipstick On or something like that. <laughs> so I guess it's its own scent they try to imitate. But yeah, I guess I could smell sort of like a lipsticky smell. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It's not floral. It's not spicy. Kind of has maybe like a slight creaminess to it, but also kind of fresh. Let me spray it. Oh, yeah, definitely when you spray it, I feel like you get a note of some floral. Um, was there a floral note in this? Orchid? Orchid? I guess. You know, I don't feel like orchids have a you know, very strong scent. Um, but yeah, you do, I, I can picture lipstick smelling like that. So that that's interesting. <laughs> Something new that I learned about one of my perfumes. This one, I kind of regret buying. It was pretty pricey and it's the smallest size. It's the Hermes Jouet de Hermes. So like the whole bottle is pretty much like half glass. Like, and then this is the little amount of perfume you get. Um, and a little gold seal there. Uh, this is supposed to be luminous and sensuous sweet pea and gardenia with an essence of femininity, femininity with flowers and nothing but flowers. So that's interesting. But yeah, when I got this, I wasn't, I wasn't that impressed with it. I feel like it does have like kind of that musky, more mature scent for older women. Yeah, I don't know. It's not exactly my cup of tea and to spend all that money on that little amount kind of annoys me. Um, so that is actually for sale on my Mercari, really cheap compared to what I paid for it. So not my favorite. This is my oldest perfume that I have in my collection and you could tell because it totally is discolored. I know, it's awful. But I think it still smells good. So I don't, you know, I'm not gonna throw it out. And I really like it. I think it still smells the same. So I don't know if it's the, just got discolored because of the sunlight, because it's old. I think it still smells the same, but this is my oldest perfume. It's uh, Christian Dior Diorissimo Eau de Toilette. Um, I purchased this, well not this exact, well maybe I did purchase this bottle, I don't know. No, no, I purchased this one afterwards. <laughs> but I purchased two bottles, at least two bottles, maybe three. Um, so of this so far, this is you know my only one left. Um, back in high school, my class went on a trip, was it the trip to Spain or Italy? You know, it must have been the trip to Spain. And I was just, you know, browsing in one of the shops and I think just smelling perfumes. And this one just, just immediately drew me in. To me, it smells like lilacs. I think it smells like just a fresh cut bunch of lilacs. And I love lilacs. Lilacs, honeysuckle, pear those are all like scents that I am drawn to um and I feel like my parents have a lilac tree in their backyard I feel like it's exactly what I would smell when I'm picking lilacs at their lilac tree um and it was just I just had to have it I didn't even think like oh I could buy it in the states I was just like oh my gosh I need to have this perfume and then I did find it in the states so I bought like at least another bottle this uh, maybe two more but I definitely like went through it and when I looked at the notes it actually says it's lily of the valley and ylang ylang and it's supposed to be like I don't know the whole story behind that how this was created was like 
considered the holy flower and they wanted to capture that and uh, there was some whole story about like some dragon being killed and the flowers that grew from the dragon's blood I, I don't know but it was interesting but I definitely didn't know it's lily of the valley I thought it was lilacs but that's what it smells like to me and I just love this scent and yeah, I mean, it's the last bottle I have. I don't, I think you could buy it on some of the discount fragrance sites now, um, since it's quite an older perfume, but I love it. And I don't think it's, it's gone rancid or anything in my opinion. Um, this next one is Paco Rabanne Olympia. Um, this was on sale at Ulta, like really cheap. And so I decided to try it. It's, you know, based on the Greek goddess and the conquest for victory. It's supposed to be refreshing Mandarin, spicy and sweet ginger lily, vanilla and salt notes. Oh, I definitely get the vanilla. I think it smells nice. It's, it's a sweet smell. I don't really smell too much citrus or, or spice or anything but I think it was you know a good purchase and a good deal on sale uh, this one here is Tokyo milk light in awaken within so yeah part of me just bought it because of that <laughs> bee on the front I love anything with bees on it um, and Tokyo milk is like one of those lesser known independent kind of brands I'm not I'm not the craziest for this when I smelled it they have a lot of darker, muskier scents, and so I got the the light uh, one that seemed to appeal to me the most, besides the, the bee on the front. And it's supposed to be a bright burst of citrus and sky, sweet orange blossom and jasmine with neroli. So maybe it's the neroli, but it's very, it's creamy and a little bit musky, but it's not like really that fresh, bright, citrus scent that I was hoping it would be it's just it's kind of warm and and musky I don't know it's not my favorite so I don't tend to wear that one too much um this was another earlier purchase it's the Balenciaga Flora Botanica so I like the little you know stripe pattern and the design of the bottle it's just really fun and modern it's interesting because the I don't feel like the scent really fits the design aesthetic of the bottle. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's, it has a very floral with some powdery undernotes to it, so that's why I feel like it's not doesn't match the bottle really. It's supposed to be carnation, wild mint, Turkish rose essence, hemp leaves, vetiver roots, and white amber. I don't know. It has. It just has that powdery undernote to it so it just kind of threw me off a little bit with that but I, I like it it's just not my favorite um this I got on sale I think from fragrancenet.com or something it's just the classic Marc Jacobs daisy perfume but it has the special like limited edition gold packaging I don't know I thought that was fun I'm not the hugest fan of the Marc Jacobs daisy scents but decided to try this one. I mean, I like them. I just don't think I would run out and buy another one um, unless something really catches my eye. But it's supposed to be fresh feminine combination of strawberry, grapefruit, violet, jasmine, musk, vanilla, and white woods. I smell the musk and vanilla. I don't really smell the strawberry or grapefruit. Maybe the violet. Yeah, the violet, kind of like the garlon, garlon scent has has that similar scent to it this one I bought for the bottle it's uh I think it's pronounced Verdue I don't know Verdue down at the bottom and it's the uh, scent Somme Yoshino so it's like cherry blossoms and I just thought that was really pretty and aesthetically pleasing um it's supposed to be a fruity floral shiso from Japan jasmine from India and patchouli from Indonesia So this was also a little bit misleading in my opinion where, I don't know, I saw the cherry blossom so I thought it would be a very nice like light floral cherry blossom scent, but it, it isn't. And I like it though. I think it's the Shiso from Japan. It's just like gives it that little bit more of a 
not androgynous, but like not super feminine scent. It's very, very green, kind of earthy, musky scent to me. Mm -hmm. I don't get fruity. I don't know where they get fruity from. But yeah, I like it, and I like um, they actually have a nice. Uh, sample sampler set because their packaging is beautiful they're all reminiscent of like a different country or or scent that they're trying to evoke and so they have a nice um, sampler of I think 20 of their fragrances or something I don't know um, and the packaging is so, so pretty so you get to test them all out and see which ones you like so I have that actually too and I but I wanted to get the full size of this like I said because of the packaging <laughs> so that one is good and this one is also another older scent I've had for a while. It's Burberry Touch for Women. Um, I really like the wood cap on this. Very sturdy and big. This is a little bit older. It's supposed to be seductive notes of jasmine, lily, and tuberose blended with juicy peach and tangy raspberry. So I feel like this could be overpowering if you did use too much of it. Um, I think you just need like one or two very light spritzes, whether you're wearing it for the, sorry, Pip is being so cute, wearing it for the work day or going out at night. But I feel like, I feel like it could maybe bother your coworkers if you like put too much on, like who is wearing all that perfume? One of those kind of scents. But I do smell the fruitiness to it with the flowers and it's a nice combination. <laughs> um, this one I bought off of Neiman's blind purchase. It's, I don't know this brand. Scherer? 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 Let's see it here. Grapefruit, middle notes of gardenia, apricot, and white peach, and base of tonka bean. I don't know. There's something about this perfume. It reminds me of something like in my childhood, like maybe like an older family member wearing something like this. This, mm, I don't know, that's what probably turns me off to is that it smells like an older person would wear it. Yeah, I don't really get the pink pepper and the tonka bean and the gardenia, but I don't really get any of those citrus, like grapefruit or white peach or anything. Yeah, it's not my favorite. This is also for sale on my Mercari um, for half, less than half the price I paid for it. Uh, this is the Ariana Grande Cloud Perfume. I think when I showed this in a monthly haul, I was like, I'm not the biggest Ariana Grande fan, but I thought the packaging was just so cute and adorable. And I know it could be childish or whatnot, but I think it's really pretty. And I think they were having extra points on scents or something that time that I purchased it. And I actually really liked this scent. I thought it would be like kind of childish and sweet and just like cheap. But no, I think it smells good. It's definitely creamy and sweet, like a vanilla scent. Um, it's described as the dreamy blend of alluring lavender blossom, forbidden juicy pear and bergamot, touch of creme de coconut, praline, and exotic vanilla orchid. Um, it's supposed to have like a cashmere-like feel. So I definitely get that feeling where it's like, has that cashmere, I don't know, softness, warmth to it. But yeah, you definitely smell the vanilla and the creme de coconut. I don't really smell too much pear or lavender blossom, but I think it smells nice. It's, it kind of does evoke the the bottle and the name, it's like a cloud dreamy and those description, descriptive words. <laughs> know what I'm saying now. Um, last but not least for this video is, uh, where did I put it? My prize Louis Vuitton Coffret. So it has the sampler of all their perfumes. Um, so they're all like these little mini bottles. I don't know how many ounces there are in each. But yeah, basically I want it to be bougie and go to Louis Vuitton, buy one of their perfumes that they had just launched. Um, this is like two or three years ago, two years ago maybe. Um, but I didn't know which fragrance I wanted. And when I saw that they had a sampler set, I was like done because when I smelled all the fragrances, it was really hard to decide which one 
I wanted full size, if any, and I was like, I just, I really did like pretty much all of them. So I was like, perfect, I'll get the sampler set. But now it's like, oh, they're so expensive and I don't wanna run out of them. So I barely use them. So that's <laughs> so bad, I know. Um, so I keep them like on display and you know, maybe I'll use them one day. Um, and right now I did notice they actually have a travel spray sampler set. So that's really convenient because I don't like the fact that like you have the little stoppers that you have to pull out. And I feel like they're so uh, tricky because when you pull them out, you know, you might spill it everywhere. You might waste perfume and uh, so expensive. You don't want to do that. And the travel spray um, set is so good and convenient to carry around and actually uh, bring with you in your purse but that wasn't out at, at the time I don't think when I uh, first went um but yeah in this Kofra you get seven scents and it's apogee which is scent of lily of the valley jasmine magnolia rose and uh guavac wood I don't know what that is and sandalwood essence so that one I thought would be my favorite out of all of them going in um but like I said, all of them really smelled nice, so I really don't think I have a favorite out of all of them. Um, the next one is Matière Noir. I don't know if I'm pronouncing these right. It's supposed to be dark wood and white flowers, and it's supposed to be a journey through dark woods, patchouli and agarwood, and black currant contrasted with whiteness of narcissus and jasmine. I remember that one smelling really nice. Uh, there's Neil Few, Few? Fusion of raspberry and leather um, with an ode to light. It's supposed to have osmanth osmanthus, which is a white flower with an animal and apricot scent, iris and saffron. So I like that idea of fusing, fusing uh, leather and this raspberry citrus uh, fruit scent. So that's um, a nice combination, I think, that makes it unique. There's Dons La Pien? Pien? P E A N? No, Dons La Pew. P-E-A-U, sorry, I can't read my own handwriting. Um, and uh, that's an infusion of leather with accents of candied apricot, jasmine, narcissus, and musk. So I think the creator of these perfumes really wanted to incorporate the manufacturing of their, you know, bags and their leather goods and really uh, create scents that would kind of evoke the smell of their leather goods as well as, you know, these other notes of uh, fruit, of floral and woods and so I think they did a really nice job of making them all different and unique in their own uh namesake the next one is contra moi it's a fusion of two travelers um vanilla blends with orange flower rose and magnolia petals with a subtle, subtle touch of bitter cocoa uh there's rose de vents de vents uh <laughs> it's supposed to be Rose, iris, cedar, and pepper with delicate like skin of velvety fruit. And the last one is turbulence, turbulence, I don't know. It's supposed to be love at first sight, tuberose fuses with jasmine with a slight touch of leather. So um, yeah, I think if you were looking for, you know, a higher end perfume, uh, check out, you know, the travel spray um, sampler set that they have. If you haven't tried any of their perfumes, I think they're very you know, luxurious and unique, and maybe you'll find one that you do end up loving and want a full size of. I'm sorry, this video is super long. I thought it would be shorter than the last one, but I think it's actually longer. So thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, I'll cut it off here for now because these are all my full size perfumes. I do have a collection of like the mini deluxe size perfumes. I'm not going to go through all of those because they're really for display collection purposes anyway. Um, but I think I will do a third video of my travel size sprays and roller balls because I have a bunch of those that I keep in a cabinet. Um, I don't reach for those too much because I'm, you know, trying to get through all of these full size bottles and give those a good use before I break out the travel sprays. But I'll probably use those when I, you know, of course, go on little trips and everything like that. So I'll go through that. 
But yeah, thank you guys. And I hope you keep watching because like I said, I have my birthday trip coming up to Vegas and then Sephora, which will be so exciting. Let me know if you guys, if any of you are planning to go to Sephora, I would love to, you know, meet up and say hi, meet you guys if you are going or if you are interested in seeing the videos um, and vlogging from Sephora, if you aren't able to go, I can't wait to share that with you. So yeah, those are some really fun, exciting events coming up and thank you guys so much for watching.